professor of applied physics at Harvard and a leading authority on geoengineering. Does he think geoengineering deserves closer scrutiny? Absolutely. Humans don't make good decisions when they hide things. And I think whatever you think about this, we'll do a better job if we talk about it openly, if we study it openly, and if we debate openly how on earth we're going to govern it. And just what we're talking about, I gave a couple of examples, but I'm sure you have a long list of them, but what are the main examples that you would single out that would have them the most impact on climate change? So I think we're talking about solar geoengineering, which is the idea that humanity might be able to alter the reflectivity of the Earth directly to reduce some of the impacts of accumulated carbon dioxide, so that it's possible, but certainly not a known thing, that a combination of emissions cut to zero and solar geoengineering might have less climate risk than just emissions cuts. Might. Yeah. Jacqueline McGlade, what's your perspective? I think, uh, in a sense, I want to combine the conversation around two of these areas, which is the carbon aspect, which is, I think, carbon removal still represents a very, very good avenue to explore, as well as the solar radiation management. And I think at the UNEA meeting, the United Nations Environment Assembly in Nairobi, the challenge was that the actual resolution, which was tabled by Switzerland, in a sense had very, I won't say loose language, but it was language that wasn't really based on a very hard technical definition. And in a sense, that got in the way because many people know that within the UN system and amongst many conventions, in fact, geoengineering has already been discussed. So I think it was more the setting of where should we discuss geoengineering rather than saying, oh, well, we're never going to discuss it and this resolution will never come back. It is already on the table has been discussed. And in fact, there are definitive and de facto moratoriums in place that really say we need to trade very carefully. Well, what are the, what are the risks then? Well, for me, I think the, the risk area that uh, really jumps up is when you talk about solar radiation management, in a sense, let me just pick up one off the list, stratospheric aerosol injection. There is definitely a downside from the ecosystems, which would be you may potentially create acidification of the soils if you use sulfide aerosols. There are lots of consequential downstream effects if you intervene in a system such as the atmosphere. On the other side, the carbon removal, there we're on, in a sense, much firmer ground because we do understand the planting of trees. I think the challenge, though, is whether these things will ever work fast enough. And is it possible to explain, in layman's terms, briefly how solar geoengineering works as a concept? One method, is, is, is which is referred to, is to put aerosols like sulfuric acid into the stratosphere. And the evidence from, as I say, really all climate models is that it can reduce changes to water availability, reduce extreme storms like uh, tropical cyclones, reduce extreme temperatures and extreme precipitation, and do that in a pretty uniform way around the world. Jacqueline McGlade, what do you think, what, what is the correct forum then, or the, the most effective forum for discussing all these issues? So. Essentially now, UN environment could potentially bring forward what I think would be a balanced assessment, looking at both the engineering and looking at the risks. But ultimately, I think it needs to be looked at within the context of sustainable development, which means it then goes back to the level of the Secretary General and the whole of the United Nations and all of the nation states themselves. David Keith, you'd like to come back. We need to look at risks on both sides. There's no question there are risks of solar geoengineering, but there are also enormous risks of having CO2 in the atmosphere. And people yeah. often imagine that cutting emissions solves the problem. Cutting emissions stops us putting CO2 in the atmosphere. It does not stop climate risk. And in fact, the evidence, while well, we should absolutely worry about the disenfranchised, the poor getting affected, the overwhelming evidence is that they are more affected by extreme climate risks. And the evidence today is they would benefit more from solar geoengineering, a much broader group looking at them before we should believe any of this.